Okay, guys. Today, Wednesday, August 9th, I'm gonna read the 16th, the chapter 16 of the Great Wizard of Oz, the Wonderful Wizard of Oz, chapter 16, the Magic Art of the Great Humbug. Next morning, the Scarecrow said to his friends, Congratulate me, I am going to Oz to get my brains at last. In a return, I shall be as others as men are. I shall be as others men are. Men are. I have always liked you as you were, said Dorothy simply. It's kind of you to like a scarecrow, he replied. But surely you will think more of me when you hear the splendid thoughts my new brain is going to turn out. Then he said goodbye to them. Then he said goodbye to them all in a cheerful voice and went to the throne room when, where, he, where he rapped upon the door. Come in, said Oz. The scarecrow went in and found the little man sitting down by the window, engaged in deep thought. I have come for my brains, remarked the scarecrow a little uneasily. Oh yes, sit down in that chair, please, replied the Oz. You must excuse me for taking your head off, but I shall have to do it in order to put your brains in their proper place. That's all right, said the scarecrow. You are quite welcome to take my head off as long as it will be a better one when you put it on again. So the wizard unfastened his head and emptied out the straw. Then he entered the back room and took up a measure of bran, which he mixed with a great many pins and needles. Having shaken them together thoroughly, he filled the top of Scarecrow's head with the mixture and stuffed the rest of the space with straw to hold it in place. When he had fastened the Scarecrow's head on his body again, he said to him, Hereafter, you'll be a great man, for I have given you a lot, a lot of brand new brains. The scarecrow, the scarecrow was, was both pleased and proud at the fulfillment of his greatest wish, and having thanked us warmly, he went back to his friends. Dorothy looked at him curiously. His head was quite bulging out. His head was quite bulging out of the top of his brains. How do you feel? she asked. I feel wise indeed, she answered earnestly. When I get used to my brains, I shall know everything. Why are those needles and pins sticking out of your head? asked the tin woodman. That is proof that he's, he's sharp. That is proof that he's sharp, remarked the lion. Well, I must go to us and get my heart, said the woodman. So he walked to the walk to so he walked to the throne room and knocked at the door. Come in, called Oz. And the woodman entered and said, I have come for my heart. Very well, answered the little man. But I shall have to cut a hole in your breast so that I can put your heart in the right place. I hope you won't hurt. I hope it won't hurt. I hope it won't hurt you. Oh no, answered the woodman. I shall not feel it at all. I shall not feel it at all. So Oz brought a pair of tinner shears. So Oz brought a, brought a pair of tinner shears and he cut a small square hole in the left side of the tin woodman's breast. Then, going to a chest of drawers, he took out a pretty heart made entirely of silk and stuffed with sawdust. Isn't it a beauty? he asked. It is indeed, replied the woodman, who was greatly pleased. What is a kind of heart? What is it a kind of heart? What is it a kind heart? Oh, very. What is it a kind heart? What is it a kind heart? Oh, very, answered the horse. Answered, answered us. He put the heart in the woodman's breast and then replaced the scratch of tin, soldering it neatly, soldering it neatly together where it had been cut. There, said he, now you have a heart that many men might be proud of. I am sorry you had to put I'm sorry you had to put a patch on your breast, but you really couldn't be helped. Never mind the patch, exclaimed the happy woodman. I'm very grateful to you and shall never forget your kindness. Don't speak of it, replied Oz. Then the two woodmen went back to his friends, who wished him very jo every joy on account of his good fortune.
The lion, the lion now walks into the throne room and knocks at the door. Come in, said Oz. I have come for my courage, and announced the lion, entering the room. Very well, answered the little man. I'll get you. I'll get it for you. He went through a cupboard, and reaching up to a high shelf, took down a scar. He went through a cupboard, and reached. Reaching up to a high shelf, took down a square green bottle, the contents of which, contents of which, he poured into a green gold dish, beautifully carved. Placing this before the cowardly lion, who sniffed at it as if he did not like it, the wizard said, "Drink." "What is it?" asked the lion. "Well," answered Oz, "if it were inside of you, it would be courage, you know." You know, of course, that courage is always inside one, so that it really cannot be called courage until you have swallowed it. Therefore, I advise you to drink as soon as possible. The lion hesita hesitated. The lion hesitated no longer, but drank till the dish was empty. How do you feel now? asked Oz. Full of courage, replied the lion, who went joyfully back to his friends to tell them of his good fortune. Oz left to himself. He smiled to think of his success in giving the scarecrow and the tin woodman and the lion exactly what they thought they wanted. How can I help being a humbug? He said. When all these people make me do things that everybody knows can be done, it was easy to make the scarecrow and the lion and the woodman happy because they imagined they imagined I could do anything. But it'll take more than imagination to carry Dorothy back to Kansas, and I'm sure I don't know how to. It can be done. Already. Okay, that that was a very very quick one, seven minutes. And that was the end of the chapter sixteen. Tomorrow we'll continue.